you by British University Vietnam. Happy New Year! Chào mừng năm mới. This is Ivo, oh, Nile Show Student Edition. Unfortunately, I have some lucky envelope here that is not on the lease, the lucky money for you guys or for the crew. Because inside the envelope is some keywords that indicate some student skills need, some skills that student needs for the future. And that is exactly what we're going to be talking about in this episode. But I'm not alone. I am accompanied by an expert from BUV. And now please take a look at who that expert is and find out. Uh, good day everyone, uh, I'm Mickey, I'm a marketing lecturer at BUV over in Ecopark. My role this season of IFO is an expert uh, and we're going to be discussing a couple of essential skills that are vital when you're studying at university and as a high school student and something that you can take into later life as well. So stay tuned for my episode, I'm going to be sharing some really useful pro tips with you. Here we are at the studio. It is so refreshing to kick off the series, the expert series with BUV on Hai Tam Tết, near the Tate holiday. And we have so many elements here for Tate holiday and we want to wish you a year full of happiness, success and luck. Thank you so much for being such a big part in our journey. And now you have already seen the video about our expert. Without further ado, let's welcome on the stage, Mr. Michael Lomack. Hello. Xin chào vị ơi. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Nice to see you. Please have a seat. Thank you. Chúc mừng năm mới. Chúc mừng năm mới. It's so wonderful to have you here, and you are the very first expert in this yeah. series with BUV. I feel honored. It's a mm -hmm. pleasure to be here with you. It's our pleasure to have you here too. <laughs> Thank you so much for spending time. Um, we have you. How long have you been living in Vietnam? Um, I've been in Vietnam just over two years now, so August uh, 2019, mm -hmm. just before the pandemic hit, so some would say perfect timing to mm. arrive in Vietnam. Before we have a discussion about many skills the student needs, mm. I want to go back in time a little bit and ask you about your student college. Um, okay. How, what did you study and how was your student life? Uh, okay, yeah, so I studied um, advertising and media. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to be back in a studio uh, for the first time in a long time. <laughs> um, and then I went on and to, to do more mass communications, marketing management, mm. later on for a master's and further. That's kind of where I'm looking to go in the future as well uh, with research and stuff. So yeah, um, that was uh, in Newcastle. So I spent uh, 10 years in that fantastic city. Uh, I haven't picked up the accent, as you can tell. You <laughs> might be struggling as a second language English That's speaker right. to understand me if I was a, a full Geordie, uh, but I'm an adopted Geordie mm -hmm. uh, because I've been there for 10 years. Uh, and yeah, fantastic city, wonderful place to, to go for university uh, and just sort of live that whole experience and then stay there and work as well. Uh, it was a great time. So along the journey that you have been on, um, I assume that skills, especially the student skills, are very important to you to, to shape who you are now, a very successful teacher, yeah. I believe. Um, so what do you think are the importance of the student skills, the skills for the students? Okay, yeah. Um, well, you're right. It's, it's something that's not just important for a student, mm -hmm. but transferable as a skill and as a soft skill that you can take with you into the industry uh, further on in your life uh, with the relationships that you build with other people in your life uh, these are essential skills that can really shape sort of the future of, of any human being's life I suppose. For my case uh, when I was in primary school we just focused on the knowledge like academic performance but I think the more like um, when the world is changing and like we're in, in the area of um, globalization the social skills are becoming more important and it's as important as the academic. Yeah to totally agree and I think that's we're going through a really exciting change here in Vietnam as Vietnam's continuing to develop. Mm. We're going from like a very old school way of learning, which was 
you get fed the knowledge and to memorize that knowledge. Whereas now sort of these skills are being developed and the way we're, we're learning um, is changing. And it's great to be a part of that process. And I feel really, really privileged to be able to be part of that development myself. Uh, and it's great to sort of give some of my skills that I've learned because I was never perfect when I was a student. It's from those learning processes of making mistakes, coming back and improving from those mistakes that I've sort of really grown as an individual as well. Mm -hmm. So keep growing, keep learning, never stop trying. Yeah, exactly. It's just do, do something with 100% passion mm -hmm. um, and you know, give it what, whatever it is that you do. Um, just do that with passion and do that with 100% is the best sort of piece of advice to give. That's right. So we have the perspective of a teacher and we have the perspective of me as a student and also we have another student who is going to share more about their stories about this. Um, so please take a look at the screen to see who the student from the BUV will be. Hi, my name is Nhu Huyen and you can call me Nhu. I'm currently a sophomore at British University Vietnam, majoring in international business management. Um, I would describe myself as a people person because I love being around and getting to know other people. And apart from being an avid learner at BUV, uh, I'm also pursuing my passion of finding great people and finding them great careers. And in my downtime, I love reading, traveling, and volunteering. I'm very glad to be on IFO Season 8 with you guys to share my thoughts and experiences about my English learning journey. Nice to meet y'all! That was wonderful to see how passionate she is about fostering her social skills and it's exactly why we have her here and talk more about that. So I have a small challenge for our very first friend here. Um, I have some Lee C red mm. envelopes, but we don't have money in here. So. No lucky money. <laughs> Sad. Inside of this envelope is a keyword. Okay. So I will have to like hint her some clues so that she might guess what that is. Okay, so the first hint for you is that it starts with the letter C and it has A and also B. Yes, it's a hard one. We have another hint for you. I know it! Can you guess it now? Collaboration! Collaboration! Bingo! That's the correct answer! Congratulations, Huyen! You've done a really, you've done a really good job. Nice. So the first um, keyword we're going to be talking about is collaboration. It's a very important skill, don't you think? Yeah, totally agree. Um, one of the skills that I've uh, had a lot of experience, both academically and throughout the industry, in developing, and something that I'm still trying to develop every day. You never stop learning uh, how to collaborate better more efficiently, more effectively, uh, and really developing that skill uh, altogether. That's very nice because collaboration also means like working together to achieve a common goal, as you said. Uh, and I think collaboration skill is actually everywhere with around us yeah. and we actually can learn this skill at a very young age yeah. and from the very familiar activity like football mm -hmm. or like talking to people and meeting new people. So how does collaboration skill can uh, foster students learning? Um, yeah, good, good question. Uh, I think collaboration within students learning is really important, mm -hmm. uh, especially uh, BUV. Um, we've been going through a, a test, a testing time is probably the expression I'd use throughout the pandemic of the last two years. So we've been forced to move um, to more of an online learning model. Uh, thankfully, we have a really good system uh, and learning management system called Canvas, and we've been able to um, move things online and transition online, but still have the capability to have collaboration and, and learning together. So we've got functionalities uh, such as breakout rooms where students can get together in smaller groups mm -hmm. uh, and work together on more of a project-based learning method where they're given a, a task to work on mm -hmm. uh, and it's all about 
uh, you know, putting, the, I know it's virtual, but putting the webcams on, nice. speaking to each other virtually, uh -huh. like you would do if you give someone a FaceTime or a Zoom call or even on Facebook Messenger. It's the same concept um, that everyone's been doing for the past, uh, what, two years now, uh, except we're just replicating that in the, cl in the online classroom. Nice. So collaborating together, and it's, we've been isolated uh, for a couple of years now, um, and it's been really testing. So I think collaborating together and just feeling connected to somebody else during the past two years has been a really good way to collaborate and, and continue that learning process. Mm -hmm. uh, and collaboration, working on projects, doing uh, PowerPoint presentations and working on these things together has been really useful uh, and has kept that learning process ongoing. Nice. And now we'll be moving on to the part where Niu Huyen will have some reflection on her collaboration skills and let's see how it goes. So, um, as I've mentioned in the past, I wasn't actually confident in my team working skills and I actually preferred working alone because um, at that time I, I wasn't a good communicator and uh, more importantly, I wasn't a good empathizer. I didn't try to, uh, to like understand others' feelings and thoughts and opinions, but um, most of the time I, I, I thought that, that I was right and that my opinion is the most important in the team as I usually take on the role of the leader in the team. But um, after some unsuccessful collaboration due to uh, my a little bit big ego, I've, I've tried to uh, adopt a different approach to teamwork. Um, although I, I am still the leader in the team, I, I want to foster um, a really like supportive environment where, where people can voice their opinions uh, and share their thoughts freely in a friendly manner before I like make the final decision based on their opinions. Thank you, Huyan. I assume that you have a very good collaboration skills. And if I were in your class, I would be, I would be, I would love to collaborate with you in some school projects. <laughs> okay, so are you ready for the next word? Okay, so the next word for you, the key word for you is. Um, See, we have two I and two R and two N. Yeah, that's a hint for you. We have only one hint. Mm, well, this and then this. Oh, is it interpersonal skill? Interpersonal skill? That's the correct answer. Good job! Interpersonal skill. And we will ask you more about that skill before uh, later on. And now we'll continue to discuss with um, Mr. Michael about the interpersonal skill. Okay, <clears throat> okay, okay. Interpersonal skill. Mm -hmm. This term, what is exactly interpersonal skill from your perspective? Oh. I've turned into Mr. Dictionary all of a sudden. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I see this um, as something that's a skill uh, that's really important to develop uh, from a young age. Um, and this is about communication uh, and communication with other people. Uh, and something that I've really had to develop living here in Vietnam. Uh, and it started off with my interpersonal skills with grab drivers or the local person in Vinma uh, as I'm trying to order some rice uh, or trying to get to the VTV studio. On in the back Vietnamese of the or in English? Uh, I'm trying both. Uh, my Vietnamese is slowly getting better, uh, but yeah, mostly in English. Uh, and luckily, uh, people have a great, a great level of English to tolerate me backwards. So interpersonal to me is that communication with other human beings mm -hmm. uh, and understanding that body language, not just verbal, but the body language. Uh, and that really links back to what we were talking about before with collaboration. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a, a real synergy there. Good interpersonal skills is something that you should be developing. And that's going to help you working with 
other human beings, no matter what language it is that you speak, having a good set of interpersonal skills uh, is going to really help you in life sort of get along a lot easier. Are there any ways for the student to develop um, the skill? Your pro tip that okay. you want to give? My, my pro tip, um, really easy, um, talk to each other. Uh, I think I think this generation. I I want to shake uh, some of the people in this generation and say, just speak to each other. Have yes. have have more of a conversation with each other, mm -hmm. um, rather than just having your head down all the time, stuck into a device. My pro my pro tip, honestly, um, is to even if it's going out for a coffee with someone. Mm -hmm. Uh, and leaving your device in your bag is just speaking to that other person uh, and going and doing work together mm -hmm. uh, and, and just speaking to another human being and developing that skill. I think that's really important. Nice. Talking to each other, note taken. I want to be your student now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for the pro tip. And I do hope that this tip can uh, help you guys somehow in you know, looking back and be more self-aware of um, this skill and also improve your skill uh, during the school environment and also outside the classroom. And don't go anywhere because we'll be right back. Hello, welcome back to the studio of IFO Nightly Show Student Edition and we're here in the discussion with Mr. Lomax about the skills that student needs for their future. So we have just talked about interpersonal skill, check, collaboration skill, check, and there are still more skills to be discovered and talked about. And now, Hina, are you there? Now we'll be uh, moving on to the next keyword for you, which is the third one. And let's see, the red envelope. Are you ready? Nice. Um, the next uh, skill consists of two words. We have two O, one P, one V, and one E. Hmm. It's hard, right? If I just listen to the hint, I just no I way can could I solve this. Problem. <gasps> and oh, then... I just say the word. <laughs> It's a skill, yes. so I think problem solving. Bingo, problem solving. You're good. Okay, so we're gonna be talking about the skill, which is problem solving. Um, we're living in the world and the life where we are encountering the problem on a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think so? Yeah, the, the construction next door to my house right now, uh -huh. I think anyone who is living in Hanoi is experiencing this similar problem. Uh, as Hanoi develops, as Vietnam develops, so does the amount of construction. <laughs> <laughs> the noise, pollution, the noise, and yeah, sometimes we have to get used to that. So how do you yourself, how do you overcome those problems <clears throat> and what is your method of problem solving skill? Um, the, I still haven't overcome the problem of the, <laughs> the, the banging next door um, <laughs> other than a, a pair of noise-cancelling headphones. Mm -hmm. um, but that develops another problem, which is a cost that you have to uh, expend on that as well. Um, so yeah, problem solving, a uh, very important skill, uh, mm -hmm. especially to develop um, at, um, at your age when you're a student. Um, and it's something that you really need to continue to develop and you, you really only start to get a grasp of applying that when you come into the industry because you start working on real life projects. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, the best thing about uh, being at university and being at somewhere like BUV is that we're, we're trying to encourage this problem solving skill within the classroom oh. uh, through a variety of different group work. Mm -hmm. Like we said, collaboration and interpersonal yes. skills we've already talked about, um, working on group projects. Mm -hmm. um, you've got a problem that you need to find a solution for, as simple as that. And then you're applying the theory, the framework, contemporary evidence to support mm -hmm. what your solution is. And 
after the 12 week semester, we offer the internship program mm -hmm. where you then go and do three months. So rather than having a three month holiday, yes. um, so I'm sure some people would love to do that, but it's much more productive to go and do a three month internship. So then you have a chance as a student to go and apply the knowledge you've, you've gathered and gained in the classroom mm. uh, into the real life environment. Um, mm. and, and that's great. And that's mm. where we're seeing it. Uh, really be applied in a productive manner. And that is how the problem solving skill is encouraged um, within the students. So everything is just like balanced with each other and equally important and like supporting mm. um, each other's skill as well. So I'm also wondering what kind of problems uh, those New Huyen are facing uh, when she is a student. Huyen? Yeah, so we're talking about problem solving. Um, tell us more about your problems at school and how could you overcome that? Uh, so I think um, in everything in life, whether it's entertainment or education or doing community work, uh, there are always problems cropping up along the way. So problem solving is definitely a key skill uh, for everyone, but especially us students. Uh, so I think um, the most prime example of my application of this skill is probably in my in my study at British University Vietnam. Uh, you know, my university is like an international school. We are studying um, according to the English curriculum, so it's a little bit different from what I've studied um, at my like national um, primary, secondary, and high school according to the Vietnamese system. So um, I have to use problem solving skills a lot in order to adapt from the Vietnamese education system into a more international curriculum. Um, and I approach it in like um, an, a principle called just in time learning, meaning that whenever I see something I don't know, I, I take the step, I make the efforts to, to learn that specific piece of knowledge and slowly, gradually, I use those pieces to add up to my overall knowledge. And um, also very fortunately, I didn't have to problem solve myself. I also have a lot of resources and support around from my teachers, my friends, my mentors, as long as I can identify the problems myself, as long as I am aware that I have a problem, I have this specific problem to solve, um, I then can have a lot of ways, a lot of approaches and tools and people around me to help me solve the problem. Very nice, bravo to Nhu Huyen for being so excellent at solving your problems. And uh, now here comes another skill and I hope that you can nail it. Hmm, which one should it be? Here it is. Okay, the next skill. This has um, two words. We have three E, three M, one A, and two T. Hey. Ooh, a watch. Must be something to do with watch time. Uh, I think Time management, isn't it? Yes, time management. Bingo! All right, time management. A very popular topic to discuss, but it's never getting old because mm. it's always important. As old as time, they might mm -hmm, say. That's right. So the time management, um, this is the skill that all the students need to, you know, to work on. For instance, when you give them assignment, and I assume that your assignment is not easy for the students, mm. and especially <clears throat> time management is one of the key to overcome that. Yeah. Yeah. Can you um, share us more about that? <laughs> yeah. There's a there's a digital marketing assignment in particular that has developed a bit of a gruesome reputation mm. as being quite hard. I think the the fear comes from the the lack of time management skills that they mm -hmm. have in writing a report like this. Rather than the difficulty of the report itself, um, obviously I feel like it's straightforward because this is my bread and butter, yes. but 
for those guys, they're like, oh, it's so much to write. That's right. Um, within however long they think they have available. Mm -hmm. Whereas it's not as difficult as it as they are making it for mm -hmm. themselves always. Mm -hmm. And that really does come down to time management skills. Um, we, we tend to release our assessments so you have roughly around six weeks to work on it. Mm -hmm. So this is a 2,500 word report mm -hmm. and you get six weeks to write that. Okay, now you do the maths. Writing 500 words a week doesn't that doesn't sound that scary, mm. okay? Writing 500 words is roughly a page, an A4 page on a Word document. So if you spread that out over five weeks, your assignment is written before you even think about it. Mm -hmm. But when you leave it to the last minute, mm -hmm. and I'm guilty of this myself, so when I, I was a student, um, until I learned from my lessons, um, if you leave it to the last minute, mm -hmm. you put yourself under unnecessary stress, uh, unnecessary anxiety um, and it's really not good time management mm. whereas if you use the time and you structure your time efficiently and effectively it's less scary and you often write a better piece of work that's right. okay and then you hand in and you submit something that's really interesting in and you can be really proud in so taking mm -hmm. pride in that work and, and this is where it comes back to engagement and focus if you engage properly with the assignment or the task or the project and you give your 100% and tackle it with some passion and spread it across the length of time that you have yes. rather than the one week that you give yourself to write it at the end of the semester, then everyone's a winner. Definitely. So stop procrastinating and living it to the last minute, even though that is the thing that all of us might be there at least once. Yeah. And I'm wondering uh, how Niu Huyen handled her time, especially when she's um, your student. She must have a lot of on her plate to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so Huyen, how about um, your time management uh, skills? What do you think about that? Well, time management is it's really the buzzword, right? Everyone uh, have heard about time management, but for me personally, I would like to think of it as priority management instead of time management because I think time is something that, that we ourselves cannot control. Whatever we do, however we spend our time, the, the clock still, still like ticks, time still goes. So um, it's how we manage our time, it's how we use our time how we like organize our priorities in that amount of time it's what makes the difference uh, so for me personally I don't try to have like a perfect day every single day where uh, like within 24 hours I have time for everything for studying for working for spending quality time with my family instead of that I try to achieve an overall balance in like a mid-term and long-term, meaning that I will try to allocate my priorities in a day, in a week, in a month, and within that day or week or month, I try to accomplish uh, just a few things, just a small number of things with maximum focus. For example, uh, today is a day when I have decided that my daily highlight, the most important thing that I try to accomplish today is um, having a successful filming session with uh, IFO season eight at campus. So I have to wake up uh, very early, wash my hair, uh, get dressed and um, prepare some, some content about my thoughts and my experiences to share with you guys and um, like get to know the, the responsibilities, the uh, scope of work of um, the filming crew. And so far, it's been very good. So I have to be honest with you guys. Um, I'm suffering a lot from bad time management as a student. And I know that a lot of students are having the same issue. So we have interviewed some students and asked them, what are some problems uh, that might be caused by the bad time management? And here are their answers. I would like to say that I used to take pride in being a highly organized person. However, ever since the unbridled outbreak of the coronavirus in Vietnam in 2020, 
There's been a paradigm shift in my ability to manage my time efficiently. While self-quarantining at home, sometimes I would waste a surfeit of time browsing the social media platforms to the detriment of my studying. And to be honest, I would also procrastinate a great deal, only finishing my work at the 11th hour or even running behind my schedule. That's why I hope that in the future, with stronger self-discipline, I can eschew getting distracted and become more productive. My biggest problem with time management is that I have a procrastination habit. I always have a tendency to put the task off until there are just a few hours left before the deadline. So when the deadline is near to come, I realize that I still have a huge amount of tasks to do. I got panicked and messed up and the quality of the task is not as good as it should be. Hanoi, are you ready to take on the final keyword? Okay, here comes the final skill. We have two letters A, one letter L at the beginning, and then we have one letter P. The hint is on your back. Oh, I know it. Leadership, leadership. Bingo! Right, leadership skill, very important. And I believe that leadership is um, not a position, it's an action. And mm -hmm. everyone has their own definitions of that. So what is your definition of leadership skill? Yeah, you're right. Uh, there's often uh, a perception of what leadership mm -hmm. is. And sometimes that perception is that it's an outgoing extrovert character who is in a position of hierarchical power. Mm -hmm. And that's not necessarily the case. Uh, and I really love seeing some of my students who are more, let's say, introvert and mm -hmm. not the typical perception of what a leader is, have a, have a silent leadership influence on that group mm -hmm. in terms of taking that ship in the right direction towards yes. that common goal, which is, you know, in a case of a, a project, doing a really good creative group presentation. Mm -hmm. So yeah, my, my, um, my definition of leadership is, is somebody who can have an influence over a group mm -hmm. in a positive way uh, right. on achieving a common goal mm -hmm. together with the rest of the group. That's right. As long as you are having positive impact on somebody's behaviors or actions, you're already a leader, yeah. a leader in your life, a leader in the class, whatever it is you might call. Um, so the problem here is that how to boost the confidence so that we can believe we can become a leader, especially for students. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I wish there was a, I wish there was a magic cure or yes. magic answer to give everyone that mm -hmm. confidence um, that you know they need to to get where they want to be. Um, and for me, it's it's through boosting that confidence comes through uh, practicing something. Yes. Um, and doing that time and time and time and time mm -hmm. again. If you go back to uh, learning to walk which you probably can't remember. I, you know, you're so young yeah. when you learn to walk. You get better at walking by practicing that every day, okay? And you slowly grow in confidence. It's the mm -hmm. same with riding a bike. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have your stabilizers on the wheels when you first start riding until you take those off as you grow in confidence. And mm -hmm. then you become really um, competent in what you're doing because you can ride the bike yes. uh, and you've grown in confidence as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that's similar with leadership is the more you do it and the more you repeat that action mm -hmm. uh, and the more practice that you have in terms of applying that skill, mm -hmm. uh, the better you're going to grow uh, as a confident leader. Nice. So how about Huyen? Uh, do, do, do you take part in any activities at class that you're a leader and what do you think about the leadership skill? Well, as you can see, um, or, or maybe not, I'm very tall uh, from a very young age. So since um, I just started going to kindergarten school, I was assigned by my teacher um, at the kindergarten school to be the class monitor. So it's like my first leadership experience. And from then on, I've always been like in some kind of leadership roles whenever um, in, in whatever community that I join. And um, to be honest, I really 
enjoy being a leader. I love bringing people together. I love communicating with my people. The vision are shared goals. I love enlisting effective help to them. And um, I love like helping people uh, to produce a joint effort together to have like increased success. And I think the most common problem is the different backgrounds between team members. Uh, and with different backgrounds come different perspectives, ideas, working styles. And um, an effective leader is the one who can, who can like um, sympathetically communicate the shared goal to the whole team so that the team members can overcome those differences, can embrace them, and um, like can capitalize on each other's strengths in order to um, produce a collaborative result. Thank you, Nguyen, so much for sticking around and sharing us a lot of interesting stories about your um, how you develop your personal skills. Um, so we are coming to the end of the year. Um, looking back, what is something that makes you the most proud of? Well, looking upon the past year, I think the thing that I'm proud of the most is that I have been able to say no more often. In the past, I used to say yes to like every opportunity that comes my way because I was afraid that uh, those opportunities may not come back, may not come to me anymore. So um, I tried to say yes to every opportunity, which leads to me being overcommitted, overwhelmed, overworked. So uh, this year I've learned to say no more often. I only say yes to the thing that I'm truly passionate about, that I truly want to do. I hope that the audience can get something out of that and be more confident. And as we have already discussed, collaboration, time management, problem solving, and leadership skill. These are all the skills that are very necessary for the students. And all of us can achieve that as long as we put all of our heart and our mind into working on those. So no worries, we have your back. Um, and in the show, we always have a part which is Voice of the Week. And before we uh, listen to the presentation of the Voice of the Week, please um, get back to the backstage and um, get to know her more. Hi guys, I am for backstage here and standing next to me is a talented debater and she is gorgeous in her outside. Hi Kang Chi, let's say hi to our audience. Hi everyone, uh, I'm just overwhelmed to be here today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you know that you are proudly to be Voice of the Week candidate in this super special episode. What is your feeling right now? It's just so surreal for me. I have never been on camera before and oh. this is such a huge opportunity to just uh, voice my opinion in IFO. Mm. I really love your energy and you look so ready for the show. So it's your stage now and off you go. Ta đều sinh ra với những số phận khác nhau, những cái ngày muốn vươn mình trước trời gió đầy khát khao. Và chẳng cần cậu phải nói một lời nào, mình vẫn cảm nhận được một trái tim đầy hoài bão háo hức và nôn nao. Next on IFO Nightly Show. And please welcome the contestant of this week, Khang Chi. And please welcome the contestant of this week, Khang Chi. Welcome Chi to the show. Oh, thank you so much. It's an honor to be here today. How are you? Uh, I'm feeling a bit nervous, but mm -hmm. I'm okay. Thank you for asking. You look gorgeous in your outside. Thank happy you so much. Happy New Year. Oh, happy New Year to everyone. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Such a good feeling, right? Mm -hmm. Now, are you ready to take on the challenge? Oh, more, more than ready. Nice. So here will be your question. Okay. Nice to meet you and Happy New Year. 
Um, of the five skills we've just uncovered, uh, collaboration, interpersonal, problem solving, time management, and leadership skills, if you could rate on a scale of one to five, from your strongest skill to your weakest skill, and a plan of improvement for each of them, um, how would you go about that? Mm, all right, so all of the five skills name above are definitely vital in our life. And if I have to say so, I have practiced using this skill through a variety of activities. In school, like being the president of the student council, or extracurriculars like debate, I will brush through all of the skills and rank them on a scale of one to five in according to how confident I am with each. Firstly, it has always so been like so intuitive for me that I had a niche in communicating with others. And maybe because I was brought up in a household where my voices are heard during dinner tables or uh, open discussions are welcome in long car rides or TV nights. And this is the reason why I can confidently say that interpersonal skill ranked first for me. And using these skills also, is uh, I using, using the skill as the core values for my other skills mentioned before, like leadership. Uh, okay, like I have mentioned, uh, being the president of the student council, discussions are vital and leading those discussions are extremely important. I always try to prioritize the most out of this world type of idea, being the first follower for all of that in innovative ideas. And in a way, with that interpersonal skills, I can translate into being a better leader myself. That's very impressive. Thank you. I love your voice and I love how you acknowledge your strength. And what do you think, Michael, about the performance? And do you have any feedbacks or comments? Yeah, I was really impressed. Mm -hmm. um, I think, uh, your, your confidence and, and your passion is clear yes. to see. And, and that's something that I love seeing in young people and young students. And I think for us to improve as a, a global society, we need young, passionate people who really care about something genuinely rather than just you know pretending to care about an area. Yes. Uh, and I'd love to see a future leader like you in the world. Mm -hmm. and I hope I'm part of your society in the future. Mm. Thank you so much. Congratulations on accomplishing your presentation in a very, very good manner. And um, you, are, you will be one of the contestants uh, who might get a chance to win the prize, which is the trip to UK. Yes, if you are the voice of the year, and I do believe that is going to happen soon because you are so good and so good at speaking, um, very prominent. We've had such an amazing discussion about the skills for the students and what will be your key message for the students before we end the show? Mm, okay, uh, my key message for you guys would be to live in the here and now. Mm. Um, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, so be present and give everything 100%. And just remember and believe that your time at college will be so much fun as long as you try your best and also try to open every door for the opportunities and leave as the best graduate that you can. Thank you so much for watching IFO Nightly Show Student Edition and until next time, bye bye. Bye bye. Happy New Year! Don't flirt with me. Okay. Hi, <gasps> Max. There's a problem of pretending. Don't know what she's saying, but like, I have to like. Yeah, thank explain. you. Thank you. <coughs> thank you. Sorry, can we do it again? One more take. Thank you, sir. It is Ted Holiday. Whoa. Blah, blah, blah. Practicing. Practicing. Here we are. Mr. Michael Lomax.